This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Whomever you are and wherever you are on your journey of life, it is God who welcomes you here today, and so do we. We are so very, very glad that you are here. Welcome to worship at St. Mark's Lutheran Church in Chula Vista, California. We are pleased that you are here either in person or with us virtually today. If you are worshiping with us at home, please feel free to download the PDF of today's worship service. You will find that right next to the button that brought you here with us today. As we are now meeting in person again, we will be celebrating Holy Communion each week. So if you are at home and you would like to celebrate as well, please have some wine or juice, crackers or bread prepared, and we will go through that section of, of the, the service together and we will give you guidance. Wanna just, uh, let's see here, <coughs> welcome you all again today and we want to begin with our opening song, We Know That Christ Is Raised. with our mission statement, I invite you to say it all together with me. Celebrating God's love and forgiveness, we serve others. We continue with the thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ has risen in peace. Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for the waters that make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God now and forever. Amen. Amen. From the one who is and who was and who is to come, the almighty grace and peace be with you all. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life 
that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The lesson this morning is from the book of Acts, chapter 3, verses 12 through 19. After healing a man unable to walk, Peter preaches to his people, describing how God's promises to Israel have been fulfilled in Jesus through the proclamation of Christ's death and resurrection. God is offering them forgiveness and restoration in Jesus' name. Peter addresses the people, you Israelites, Why do you wonder at this, or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did all your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. Word of God, word of life. you to stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While while in their joy they were still disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, have you anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Well, we have here today the most important part of each of these stories, right? These lessons that we heard today from Acts and from the book of Luke, if you've been paying attention, in the last few weeks we have the Gospel of John, we have Mark, and now we have Luke, just to make sure we really understand this Easter story. But we have today the uh, take-home sayings, the uh, quotable parts of these stories. But what we do not have included are the actual stories. So I don't know about you, but I like stories. So why don't we start with the stories that make these things, these words, come to life? Picture this. 
basically everyone in Jerusalem on this day of Jesus' resurrection knows about Jesus. They've either been following his career for a while or when they came into Jerusalem to celebrate Passover because Passover is a celebration with family. They heard it from their, their relatives living in Jerusalem. So everyone was abuzz with what was going on. Everyone was talking about that triumphant entry, that big party parade that looked very much like it was going to turn into a coup. Everyone heard about the overturning of the temple, uh, of the coin tables on Temple Hill, and everyone knew about the crazy turn of events. How his best friends denounced him. How everyone turned on him and how he was handed over to be crucified. That was enough fodder for tabloids for a long time to come, but then there was a crazy rumor going around just started that morning, and word was aflame everywhere that some of his followers said he was alive. Crazy, unbelievable, enough to keep things going for a very, very long time and enter into this situation a couple. Heading home to Emmaus after a very eventful week. After all that had happened, I'm sure they did not want to leave, but duty called and they had to go home. We take it that this couple were probably followers of Jesus in some capacity, which becomes clearer as this story goes on. So this couple walking home, one of whom was named, the Clopas, are baffled and confused, they're upset because they really had their hearts set on this Jesus person. It seemed like everything was just on the brink of change, maybe even revolution. Things were going to be different, better. They were going to be better. And then suddenly, they were not. And as they continue walking along, a stranger catches up with them. They're so engrossed in conversation, they don't even notice that he's there. But then he asks, hey, what are you talking about? And they turn on him and launch into an incredible speech. Where have you been? Don't you know anything that's going on? Haven't you heard about this Jesus of Nazareth? The one we thought would come to save us all? The one we thought that would finally rid us of the Romans? And that our own chief priests killed him? and her hopes are dashed. You haven't heard any of this? What rock have you been hiding under? And this stranger must have paused, allowing them to catch their breath, and then slowly and calmly and kindly began to point out to them that throughout all of Scripture that God has never let his people down. God has always been there showing up in a new way. Never in the way that's expected, the stranger must have reminded them. But without a doubt, always present, always redeeming, always making new. And this couple must have experienced something that they hadn't felt for several days. Hope. A little bit of light in that dark time. The thought that maybe, maybe God would redeem his people again. Maybe there was still a chance for life and for hope, for newness, for something better. When they reached their home in Emmaus, seven miles away, it was becoming evening, and they certainly didn't want this man, this man that they had come to appreciate, if not love. They didn't want him being walking around at night. And so they invited him in. Have dinner with us. Stay the night if you need to. And the stranger took them up on their offer. The offer of hospitality. The offer of inviting someone into our homes, into our lives. But then something happened that most of us would not grasp in our first reading of the scripture. The stranger picked up the bread. It was the custom in Jewish homes to bless the bread before every meal, but that is the role of the host. On this occasion, the stranger picked up the bread, and when he broke it, 
the scales fell from their eyes and they knew immediately who he was. They had invited the stranger in, offering them what they had. Yes, their hospitality and yes, their bread, but they also offered to him their confusion, their sadness, their doubt, and the despair. And the stranger, Jesus, became the host. The stranger came in, took over the situation, and left them with the blessing of peace. And then he disappeared. But this was not as unsettling to them as they would have thought because as they looked at each other, they both agreed, did not our hearts burn within us as he revealed to us the Holy Scripture. That, in my opinion, is a far more interesting story which parallels the story that we have today of Jesus showing up in the midst of his disciples and the evening of the day of his resurrection. And you may have noticed that today Jesus' words to his disciples are exactly what we heard in the Gospel of Mark, peace be with you. The first words he speaks are peace be with you. Of course, the disciples are shocked, confused, afraid, They can't figure this out. Their minds cannot comprehend what God has done, that Jesus is there in the midst of their confusion, their doubt, their despair. So in our Bible study, which you know I love to quote, (laughs) we really talked a lot about this, just how confusing it would be to have Jesus suddenly show up in the midst of all that was going on, in the midst of their fear and despair. Suddenly, Jesus showing up and changing everything in a heartbeat, but that you might understand in your heart, but your head cannot comprehend what is going on. But we hear this story so frequently, right? We hear it every year. So I think sometimes we get desensitized to just how amazing this event was. So one of the members of our Bible study gave us an analogy which I thought illustrated it beautifully. She spoke of a surprise party given by her brother-in-law for her sister at a beautiful location in Florida. Now this whole event must have been very, very well orchestrated because this sister was completely surprised. I don't know if she even knew where she was, let alone who was in front of her. But even as she went around and greeted all of the guests and said hello and thank you for coming, Our member told us it took her a full hour and a half to realize who it was who was in front of her. How is it that my West Coast sister and family are here in Florida? What is going on? How can this be? And my friends, again, that is okay. That is okay. It takes us quite a while to come to terms with Jesus showing up in our midst and what that might mean. Now the shock and the surprise of a story like that is a joy enough to watch, but then we go back and we look at the details and we realize that our God has a beautiful way of paying attention to the most minute details we need. The eating of the bread earlier, the eating of the fish in this story Tell the disciples that he is not a phantom. He's not part of their imagination, not just a spirit, but really, truly present, just as we believe Jesus is really, truly present in the bread and the wine. But there's another aspect here which I take to heart, and I hope that we can all see as well, that Jesus enters in the midst of chaos, confusion, despair, and doubt, anger, frustration, and fear, and immediately becomes the center of attention, immediately becomes the master. This is how it should be. Jesus takes charge. Jesus takes over. Isn't it good to know that our God is willing and able 
to be in charge. My friends, all of this goes for us as well. We take Jesus in. We show our hospitality. We offer what we have. And then Jesus takes over. Jesus is the one that transforms the situation, settles our fears, answers our questions, and gives us peace. That goodness continues on, as we heard from the book of Acts, where we hear Peter's speech at the, event of an ev- um, at the end of an event which was very early in the life of the church. Maybe you've heard this story before, too. That Peter and John went to pray. They met a lame man on the way who put out his hands and said, Alms, and this is what Peter did say, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. You know this from Sunday school, right? Right? And he went walking and leaping and praising God, walking and leaping, praising God in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. The story you learned in your Sunday school is that preceding event to Peter's speech. And now that I have your attention, Peter says, let me tell you who Jesus is. Watch and see how this living God comes to us in a fresh, new way. This story is repeated time and time again. It is repeated right here in our midst. We prepare ourselves. We offer what we have, including our doubts and our fears. We let Jesus in, and then Jesus takes over. Jesus leads the way. Jesus points out to us again what we have, and just as he did for the disciples, commissions us to go and tell and be witnesses to these things. My friend, St. Mark's Lutheran is uniquely poised now to invite others in, offering what we have. We have this service, which we can send to anyone around the globe. We have this patio now where we can invite friends and family in. This is how it works. Someone you like, who likes you, tell them what you might, you've experienced here and invite them to come and see. And then it's Jesus' work. We invite them to come and hear the word. We invite them to partake in Holy Communion. Then it's Jesus who answers questions, who guides them on that next step who meets their needs, and we are witnesses to these things. We can invite people in new and creative ways, invite them to our Sunday school. We can continue to invest in our youth. We can reach out to our neighbors. We can look out for our homebound and the needs within this congregation, and we can meet the needs of this community. Letting, this, like, letting Chula Vista know that this is a place that welcomes. So keep your eyes and your ears and your hearts open for how God might be calling you to help spread the word, to start something new, to take a latent idea and bring it to life. For God is in the business of showing up and guiding and taking the lead, giving us new and creative ways. My friends, this story is pertinent and it matters today. Jesus is alive. Jesus is present today. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. This is good news. Let's celebrate. Amen. Thank
Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer us in his steadfast love. Living God, in the midst of Easter joy, we are still filled with questions and wondering. Open our hearts and minds as we encounter the scriptures so that the church embodies repentance and forgiveness in the name of Jesus to all nations. Hear us, O oh God. Creating God, like a master artist, you have fashioned the universe out of your love and delight. Heal your creation where it is in need of restoration. Provide all the inhabitants of earth a peaceful and sustainable home. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of all, the nations hunger and thirst for your righteousness. Many call on you for guidance and strength. Answer their hopes with the peace of Christ and give your loving kindness to national, state, and local leaders of people. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Healing God, you hear the cries of those in need and answer them in their distress. Grant to those who are sick and suffering your compassion and nurse them back to health and wholeness, especially Coda Maverick and Margarita Alvarez. Be close to the hearts of the lonely. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Loving parent, you have given us such love that we should be called children of God. Reveal yourself to us so that we, in this community of faith, will become more and more like you in our mutual love and bold witness. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Other prayers may be offered at this time, either out loud or in your heart. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of all times and ages, those who have died in you now see you as you are. We thank you for their lives among us, especially Earl Karlovsky and Francis Pratt. Assure us of the peace you have promised that we may join them in everlasting life. Hear us, O oh God. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in you and your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We remember today in prayer, Margarita A, recovering from an accident, Leslie B, breast cancer, surgery and radiation. For Ava Grace I, baby with health problems still in the hospital, Jessica and Brandon I, the parents. Coda Maverick C, immune system problems, is home from the hospital. And for Quinn G, prayer pockets for Jacob I, the four-year-old brother of Ava Grace. Regina C, Coda's mother. Corey C, Coda's father. Keen C, Coda's big brother. Sherry C, Coda's grandmother, and Dennis Coughlin, Coda's grandfather. Hear our prayers. Amen. Jessica and Brandon. Lucia. For Margareta. Denny, 
necessary. So Regina. So Jacob. So Corey. And for Keeney. Gracious Lord, we raise them up again. We ask your blessing, your protection, your healing, your help, your comfort, your patience, your love, your support. And may the community also support them, providing what they need. Use us, gracious, gracious Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We invite you to give a sign of peace to those around you. You are free to do an elbow bump. We will keep our social distance. You at home, we invite you to share the peace of Christ with those around you as well. You may also put your peace of your greetings of peace in the comments below. Um, also, feel free to lift your hand and bless someone in any direction around you that is in need of God's peace. And we continue with our offering. We thank you for your ongoing support for the mission and ministries of St. Mark's Lutheran Church. Uh, we are so pleased to partner with you in so many, many ways. We invite you to continue to send in or bring in your offering to the church office um, at 580 Hilltop Drive in Chula Vista, or you may use our Venmo account, which is at St. Mark's Church Chula Vista, or you may work this out with your bank to give electronically on an ongoing basis. And we will sing now our offering song. of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts that we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you. Almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels, archangels, cherubim, and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy.
which he was betrayed, our Lord took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and help us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We invite you at home and also those who you're present now to take that little uh, cup and open up the cellophane at the top. It's a little tricky. And you may take that bread with the words, the body of Christ is given for you. And at home, we invite you to do the same. And then commune each other at home or, of course, ourselves here. And with the juice, the blood of Christ is shed for you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We now have a little bit of community time. I'd just like to update you on a few things and let you know of a couple of opportunities. Today online, you will find this in the weekly, uh, the weekly email sent out yesterday. 10 o'clock will be our Sunday school. That will be on Google Meet and you can click on that and join us. And then 11.15 today is a once a month Sunday uh, Bible study. So if you'd like to join us for that, please uh, go again to that same link and you should be able to join a Zoom link uh, 1115 today. If uh, the other works for you, three o'clock on Tuesdays, that's open to anyone. If you need any help connecting, please let myself or Deb Lechner know and we will assist you with that. We are also building up our children and youth ministry team. So if anyone is interested in working with children and youth, please contact me and I'll send you that link. Um, also looking for people to assist with Sunday worship if you would like to read uh, the lessons and help with the prayers and other things like that, please let Sherry Coglin over there know. Thank you very, very much. Was there anything else we should announce today? I just want to make sure you all know the wonderful things that are going on here, how it was 540 families, 540 bags were given out at the new drive through um, food distribution with Project Hand. Thank you all for your ongoing support for that. If anyone would like to assist, we're looking for more volunteers, a great way to get to know our community. And uh, continuing to grow things like our member care group. So if that's also of interest to you, please speak to myself or Dorothy Geyer. Thank you very much for that. Anything I missed? Sure, we're good? All right, okay. Receive the blessing. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus. 
the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. We'll close with the joyful song, Hallelujah. We sing your praises. Know that we reach, sing every section two times.